This video starts off with a strong pastel hint and a slight ripple, and some of you might be thinking, oh, this is just as bad as the iPad. Well, wait till you actually see this. I take off the exposure lock, and suddenly it's Flickr Central, but you can't blame the camera this time because these LEDs, this LED tape is really, uh, really very flickery. It's uh, using alternate, alternate pixels of six LEDs, and although they look static at the moment, they're actually shimmering backwards and forwards very quickly. And the reason for that is that this can animate, and I'm going to warn you in advance, this is about to get super unpleasantly flickery. Ready? Flicker! Oh yeah, see, that's just hideous. It's abominable. Um, and if I show you this, you can see the pixels are alternating backwards and forwards. It's hideous. Bring back the light. Ah, uh, that's better. Right. So what have we got here? We've got this material which uh, came from a seller called... Oh. Zong, Z-H-O-N-G, Q-F-L-G-6. That's not very memorable. And it's called 220 volt waterproof horse race LED strip. There's that phrase horse race again. Why do they call it horse race? Now, it might look uh, really unrealistically low priced at 99 pence, but the reality is that as soon as you choose anything other than the plastic clips, it goes up to a more modest price. And for two meters with the termination controller, it was £12.86. You know, that's not too bad. That's still okay for what it is, although to be honest, it's very flickery. It's very, very flickery indeed. Even if I set this now to its uh, static mode, it's got a Christmas lighting style controller. You'll see that is, to me, visually, that is kind of static with a flicker, but to the camera, obviously, it's really struggling to lock onto that because um, it is very flickery because they are, you know, oscillating backwards and forwards. So um, let's uh, unplug this and take a closer look at the strip. So when you take a closer look, it's got these clusters of LEDs that are approximately six, well, there are six LEDs in a cluster, but they're actually wired as three LEDs in series times two. And likewise, uh, each set of these resistors, there's a pair uh, for that LED and then a pair for that LED because they're bouncing on alternate, alternate polarities. And uh, the resistors seem to be quite reasonably rated, particularly given the sort of duty cycle they've got. The back of it also has this rather neat effect. Uh, I'm going to try and find a bit that has the, I think that'll do there. So let's focus on that and I'll try and backlight it so you can see a sort of pattern. It's basically based on little islands of light, uh, islands of copper that have those LEDs across them and then the sort of little uh, thick tracks here for the resistors because there is quite good dissipation in the resistors as well. And I can imagine this stuff being used probably on an arcade game or perhaps around a booth somewhere. It's too flickery for home use. It really is unpleasantly flickery because of the polarity reversal thing because that is why it's, it's uh, doing that. It's only got two connections and by swapping the polarity they are changing which of those pairs of LEDs, well, those sets of LEDs is lit. The stuff is cuttable every metre in this case, although it's notable that once again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, every ten LED clusters, there is a solder joint. Uh, that's doing this at a half metre thing that is so common with this stuff. And then every full metre, you've then got the gap. And they keep the gap deliberately um, to uh, avoid any short circuit because effectively, one side of this is live and one side of it is neutral. It looks as though it's been designed for other applications. They've actually got polarity marked here, but they're just bridged across. It looks as though they can effectively control the LEDs in a, a more sophisticated control system, but they've not gone for that approach here. So let's take a look at the controller. The controller is a bit like a sort of standard Fairlight controller. It says press LED combination and wave sequential, slow glow, chasing flashing, slow fade, twinkle flash, steady on. I have to say that they're not actually in that sequence. There's something different about this one. Eight programs, mini controller, 220 to 240 volt made in China. And there's no screws, so it's probably clipped together. So let's pop it open and take a look. Is this too bright? Am I going to just take? No, no, that's all right. It's not bad. Is this going to be clipped? Actually, I can get in there. Mm. 
Mm. It's scuffing up. Oh. Oh, it's clipped together with little uh, pins. That's good. So what do we have? Let's uh, take a closer look at this. We've got two BT-136. I would have thought this would have been thyristors based in traditional... Oh, of course, it's reversing the polarity. That looks like a bridge rectifier. This is probably the power supply dropper resistor. There's a little control chip with its power supply capacitor. Oh, the bridge rectifier is actually pairs of... I'm going to pause a moment and I'm just going to reverse engineer this because the bridge rectifier, it's not a bridge rectifier. I'm going to have to get my head around this. One moment, please. Well, that turns out to be a fairly interesting circuit and it is two triacs that are switching because effectively it's kind of putting different polarities out here. It has to switch on the positive and the ha negative uh, half of the waveform. So if we start off with the mains in... Means in, let's say, 220 volt. It is kind of designed for 220, 240 volt. 240 volt here, but in this case, uh, it's I'll just put it down as its original designed voltage. And those, uh, the mains connection, just go across the other end. We'll start with the power supply first. Now, the power supply is very simple. We've got a resistor, a power resistor, and the colour code on it is yellow, orange, black, red. It's a four-band resistor, and that means uh, yellow is four, Orange is three, black is zero, and the red is uh, two zeros, effectively. The red means two, but that's uh, the zero multiplier. So that gives a value of four, three, and three zeros. It's 43K. It comes down and gets half wave rectified by a diode. The diode is pointing in the sort of opposite direction you'd expect, and it effectively creates a negative supply rail with respect to the... I'm not going to call this the ground, it's the other leg of the mains, but it's the zero volt reference for the circuitry. And across the uh, capacitor is a Zener diode. And I measured the voltage and it comes in about three volts. It holds the supply at. There is another what appears to be a little diode across the capacitor. I'm not sure the purpose of that. They've just bodged that in the back. I don't know if it's to make sure... Uh, I don't know at all, actually. I'm really not sure that uh, that's there. Let's uh, test that right now. So, uh, I'm not sure how this is going to test. So, yeah, that's just an ordinary diode, by the look of it. An ordinary diode wired in reverse parallel. Just presumably to stop in some way the voltage across that capacitor going up the wrong... I don't know. I really don't know why it's wired like that. Whether why they've added that diode. Odd. Yeah, but anyway, they have added that diode. And then we've got the control circuitry. Now, the control circuitry is that little 8-pin chip. Not really much can say about that because it's an anonymous chip as it usually is. And it has a reference. It has a 470k resistor. That's a yellow, violet, yellow, four seven and four zeros, 470k. And that is being used as with most of these Christmas light controller chips. It's being used to sense the sort of mains waveform, uh, so it knows that when it's crossing crossing the zero crossing point, and also when it goes into dimming mode, and this does the dimming effect. It note can then use the timing to actually uh, time the trigger point along the sine wave. The chip then just has its usual uh, reference to the positive reel. In this case, it is the positive there, and that's the negative there. And there are two triacs. Let's draw them lazily. And the reference to this reel, and then the output to the LED strip comes from here, comes from that reel directly, and then splits. And half of it goes to two diodes facing that way. That was what looked like the bridge rectifier, but they're just two diodes in parallel just to increase the power rating. 
And the other side of it goes to uh, two other diodes in the opposite direction. And that means when this track switches on, it's going to see, say for it's going to see the top half of the sine wave like that. And when this uh, track switches on, it's going to see the bottom half of the sine wave like that. And that's how it does the polarity reversal. And that's also why it's so incredibly flickering. And effectively, when they both turn on, it means that uh, the LEDs are seeing both halves of the sine wave. But unfortunately, uh, it's just, you know, only one set is lit at a time. And it is very flickery. Did I mention how flickery it was? It's extremely flickery. So the triacs are driven. They're effectively, they're tied to the positive three volt rail and then they're pulled down negative to turn them on. The reason they're doing that is that's just the easiest way to drive triacs. It requires the least current. It makes the circuitry a lot simpler after smudged ink everywhere on this, not to worry. The value of those resistors is blue, gray, black, six, eight and zero multiplier. So it's 68 ohms. And likewise, there's one uh, effectively coming across from here with another 68 ohm resistor. I'll just look, draw it very crudely like that. That was very crudely. That is supposed to be another 68 ohm resistor, but you get the idea. And that's uh, that's it, I think. Is that everything? That is everything. I'll just write chip because that's all I can really say about that. So it's a very simple circuit. It looks as though it's kind of based on a Christmas lighting circuit, but effectively what it's doing, it's controlling the polarity of the waveform that's switched out to this. Um, it's an interesting stuff. I, I still don't get why they call this horse race. I mean, I've tried it. It's good. No, it doesn't feel like a horse at all. I don't know why they call it horse race. Everything that chases, they just seem to call it horse race for some reason. It must be a translation thing that's stuck. And that's been going on for many, many years. So it's, it's not going to change anytime soon. But it's an interesting device, but it is, um, I like the fact it creates these little stars of the, the pixels are nice chunky stars. They do look nice from a distance, but that flicker is so annoying. It'd be nice if they did a similar strip, I presume they do a similar strip, just static without any flashing, um, because then, you know, it would just look a lot nicer. But the colours are nice too, the fact they've used the sort of pink phosphors and the, the yellow phosphors as well. Instead of um, using yellow chips, they've used yellow phosphors. I think, hold on, I'm just going to try that again. Noting that the circuit board is out and exposed. Yeah, it is yellow phosphors. Yellow phosphors, pink phosphors, green, blue and red chips. So, yeah, it's a nice visual effect. But as I say, that flickering is just a bit too much. It really, even to human persistence of vision, out the corner of your eye, it strobes visibly. It's not pleasant. But uh, interesting nonetheless. Interesting to take to bits.